Hey Canucks fans, it's time to revisit the Jacob Markstrom Thatcher Demko dilemma. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, December the 29th. And before I talk about today's topic, I want to remind you that tonight, tonight, Sunday, 10 p.m. on YouTube, I'll be starting my new weekly series of Clay's Canucks Commentary live on YouTube every Sunday at 10 p.m. Pacific time. So for those of you watching in the East or those of you watching overseas, all three of you, I apologize. You'll have to catch the video in my archives. But I'll be on online for about 45 minutes to an hour talking about the week that was, the week ahead, anything about the Vancouver Canucks that you want to talk about. So please join me right here on YouTube, 10 o'clock tonight at the conclusion of the Vancouver Calgary Flames game. Well, actually, it'll be about an hour after the game ends. Uh, that gives me a chance to gather my thoughts, record my post-game vlog, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so hopefully I see you guys tonight and every Sunday night at 10 p.m. here on YouTube. One thing we may talk about tonight, and we should talk about right now, is Thatcher Demko and Jacob Markstrom. Jacob Markstrom had an awesome, another awesome performance last night. 49 saves on 51 shots in the Canucks 3-2 win over the Kings. Now, it's it's career high when it comes to shots, comes to saves, I should say, 49, which is amazing. I do think that the shot clock flattered the Kings a little bit. Sure, they dominated the Canucks in some spurts, but 51 shots is a lot, and the broadcast even made mention that the, the Kings had the biggest shot differential in the entire NHL, but the Kings aren't very good. They're at the bottom of the league, near the bottom of the league, so that tells me, and we saw it last night, they shoot from everywhere. They shoot from outside, from inside, from on the side, to in the middle, from behind the net, from from the beside the net, and don't get me wrong, they have some really good forwards. They still have some good forwards and some good talent, but I think, um, yes, Markstrom made 49 saves, but not all of them were that difficult. We've seen him make uh, more difficult saves in, say, a 25 or 30 save outing. But that's not to take anything away from Markstrom and the season he's having. We know how well he's playing. He's probably the Canucks MVP, him and Pedersen, but you could argue, make a good argument for Markstrom. He's made two trips to Sweden to deal with his ailing and, and ultimately his father who passed away. And he talked about it in his interview on Hockey Night last night. Just so strong, obviously physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. And, and I can't say enough about Jacob Markstrom. We know that Jacob Markstrom's contract winds up at the end of this season. He was on a really good contract making $3.666 million a year. So three and two and thirds million. Um, really a steal for what he's given us. Granted, you don't want to overpay and you don't want to get into crazy contracts for goalies because we've seen that how those work out a lot of times across the league. Thatcher Demko, the heir apparent, is on a two-year contract, first of two years, paying him a very reasonable $1.05 million. So between the two goalies, you're paying them $4.7 million, which is really good. It's one part of the salary cap that Jim Benning has, has handled quite well. But that's going to change because Markstrom's up next year, Demko's up the year after that. So here's the thing. Before the year started, before the season started, I had in my head... Oh, we got to keep Thatcher Demko because um, he's the goalie of the future. And I had high hopes for him. I just like I know I know for a fact that Canucks. I've heard firsthand that Canucks management have had and still have high hopes for Thatcher Demko. Luongo type hopes they've talked about in Luongo type terms. And maybe he's going to turn in that goalie still. But he's had a couple of injuries, been mostly consistent. But it's nothing to do with Demko, nothing bad, but rather how good Jacob Markstrom's playing. And admittedly, at the start of the season, I was thinking, okay, what are we going to do about Jacob Markstrom? Do we trade him? Does he have value? What do we do? Do we try and sign him cheaper? I don't think that's going to happen. And then Markstrom is just, is just having an amazing season, even better than last season. And it's, I think I was talking about that because of how much I like Demko. And it's not like I dislike Markstrom, but I thought I always had my eyes set on Demko. But now, and maybe with a lot of Canucks fans, I'm starting to change my view, change my perspective a little bit. I'm starting to see chatter now on Twitter and on, on message boards about keeping Markstrom and, and trading Thatcher Demko. And of course, this all has to do with the Seattle expansion draft in, two, in June 2021. So a year and a half from now, where you're only allowed to protect one goaltender. And Markstrom and Demko, because of their experience and their age, both of them will have to be protected. So the Canucks can only protect one. So obviously, this is going to come up a lot, especially in the new year as the Canucks push for a playoff spot. And as we know that Jacob Marshall's contract ends on June 30th, comes a free agent July 1 if we don't sign him. And I asked Thomas Strantz this at the athletic gathering last month. I said, what would you do for Jacob Markstrom? And he basically said, of course, the expansion draft is coming and you've got to think about that. But he also said, he, you don't, that shouldn't really change what you do. That shouldn't change your thinking. And he would try and sign 
Markstrom to a two or three year contract at five million or so. Now I, I'm not sure if those numbers work. Um, you know, I, I caught not caught Thomas Trance um, off guard. He was, but he was able to answer right away. Five million seems a little low. Maybe we're looking five and a half, six million. I don't know. I'm not an expert on goalie contracts, so maybe one of you can leave a comment below and tell me what you think. A Jacob Markstrom's next contract should be, and he's going to sign for only two or three years. But I guess the point is, the longer that Markstrom signs for, and the more money you give to him. The more you're signaling to Demko, either Markstrom's still our guy and you're not, or to Demko, you still need more time. And how's Demko and Demko's camp going to feel about that? Especially if they think he's going to be, he, he deserves a chance at the number one. Now, is he going to get that chance this year? It's pretty tough. If Jacob Markstrom plays how he's playing, if the Canucks continue to win, which you all hope, and if the Canucks are battling, if they're second, third, fourth, even first in the Pacific Division when it comes time for February, March, of course the Canucks aren't going to trade Jacob Markstrom because he'll probably be the reason why they're in that playoff battle. If the Canucks anticipate a chance to make a run in the playoffs, you're not going to trade your number one goaltender. I, I, I think the only way you would even entertain training Jacob Markstrom, and I, I've talked about this for a, a few months, would be if the Canucks were completely out of a playoff spot, they had no chance at all, and you could trade Jacob Markstrom to a, a team who might need insurance for the playoffs, and then you get some assets back. But if the Canucks are one of those teams that are in a playoff spot, then of course they're not going to trade the number one goaltender. So then do you trade Thatcher Demko to load up for a playoff run? I hope not. I still think you need two good goalies in this league. And Demko, as much as I like him, I would argue that he still hasn't proven himself yet. He's getting there. He's getting better. And he's playing at least some games this year before his concussion. But he's back now, thank goodness. But one would argue that Demko still hasn't fully established himself yet. So I think that's the dilemma we're in. And dilemma has negative connotations, but it is a bit of a dilemma. Because we're going to have two goalies. Two goalies that think they should be number one um, starters. That should be starters, number one goalies. And obviously there's only one net for the majority of the night. Well, there's one net every night, but then you know what I mean. One guy will play the majority of the time. Sound familiar, Canucks fans? I think we've been through this a couple of times, most uh, notably with Luongo and Schneider, and that ended up with Schneider, the incumbent, uh, I mean the young guy, the heir apparent, the one being traded and not the veteran in Luongo back in the day. So I'm really, really fascinated. I don't want it to be a distraction. I don't think it'll be a distraction, especially the Canucks are playing well. And Jacob Markstrom seems to be the type that won't let it become a distraction. If he's played through the death of his father, I think he can play through a bit of contract talk. But it is going to come up over and over again as the season progresses, especially as Marstrom continues to play well. So Canucks fans, I asked you, right now on December 29th, projecting ahead, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think one of the two goalies will be traded uh, before the trade deadline? I don't think so. Do you think Markstrom will be re-signed, extended? I think so. Then if that's the case, what are we talking about in terms of term and money? I'd love your thoughts below. Do you agree that it's going to be like a two, three years, five, five and a half, six million dollars? Do you have to go longer? Do you think he won't sign for two or three years? Who knows? And then what does that mean for Demko? Or do you somehow trade him after the trade deadline for assets, either at the draft you know, um, or, or just before July 1. There are so many scenarios. They're all fascinating. I'd love to start exploring some of them with you today. And then I'm sure we'll be talking about this a lot over the next few months. I don't want to talk about it, but I think we have to because it's not even an elephant in the room. Uh, it's, it's something that most Canucks fans, and I'm sure Canucks management are aware of. But uh, I'm almost certain if you asked Jim Benning today, if you had to ask him, he would say, no, we're going to re-sign Jacob Markstrom. And then they'll figure out the Thatcher Demko. So I think it's more of sign, re-sign Markstrom, figure out the Demko thing, as opposed to focus on Demko and figure out the Markstrom thing. I think that, that doesn't give uh, Markstrom enough credit or enough respect. Let me know what you think. There's a lot there, but I'd love to know what you think. Leave a comment below. I'll read, react, and apply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. And we can talk about this more even tonight live with, uh, with our, our 10 o'clock Clay's Canucks commentary live on YouTube. Enjoy the day. Canucks in Calgary tonight. I barely talked about tonight's game because I don't think they're going to skate today given that they traveled late last night. So we'll see if the Canucks can make it five in a row and overtake the Calgary Flames in the standings. Wouldn't that be a sweet thing today to end off 2019? Have a great day. God bless. Go Canucks go.